to be able to fully exploit the matching function, we need to introduce a new variable. That new variable um, is going to be called the labor market tightness. This labor market tightness is going to play a really important role um, during the entire semester. So we are going to denote it, the labor market tightness, by the Greek letter theta, and we are going to define it as the ratio between the number of vacant jobs that are available and the number of workers who are unemployed. So it's really telling you how many vacant jobs you have per unemployed workers. That's what the labor market tightness tells us. So if you have a very high tightness, it means you have many vacant jobs per unemployed. So unemployed workers have a lot of choice, a lot of availabilities. If you have a very low tightness, it means you have very few vacant jobs per unemployed workers. So you see here, uh, unemployed workers have very little uh, options. So why is that tightness so important? It's critical because it's going to tell us both how quickly workers can find jobs and how quickly vacancies can be filled. So it's, it's quite wonderful. It says, basically, it describes everything that's going on um, on the labor market. Okay, so how can that be? Well, let's try to compute uh, the job finding rate. So here, key assumption that we've made before and that I'm going to restate, that key assumption is that the matching function M has a um, constant returns to scale. Okay, so that's something that we're going to uh, that's something that we're going to uh, exploit. So the first thing I want to compute is the job finding rate. So the job finding rate is the rate at which workers can find new jobs. Okay, so the job finding rate in terms of notation, I'll always call it F. And what's the definition? So it's the rate at which workers can find jobs. So it's just the number of uh, employment relationships that are created, which is given by the matching function. So it's M of U and V. So this is the number of uh, new matches that are created, but it's a rate. So it, it, we have to scale that down by the number of unemployed workers who are actually searching for jobs. So you have to divide that by the number of unemployed workers. So the job finding uh, rate is the number of jobs that are created, which is given by the matching function, m of mu v, of uh, uv, so that's the number of new jobs that are filled, divided by the number of job seekers. Right? So this is the job finding rate. It tells you per job seeker how many new jobs have been created. Okay? Uh, and it turns out that this job finding rate is going to depend on the labor market tightness. In fact, it's going to be solely determined by the, by the labor market tightness. So how do we know that? Well, let's try to compute it. So F, we've said by definition, it's M of U and V divided by U. Okay? Now, we've said the matching function as a constant returns to scale. So what does that mean? It means that dividing the entire function by something, like here, dividing it by the unemployment rate, is the same as, div as dividing each argument by that something. Here, the number of unemployed. So it means that we can do f is going to be equal to m of u divided by u and v divided by u. So here, we could go from here to here using the constant returns to scale assumption. Okay. We have constant return to scale that allows us to do that. Now, what do we have here? Well, we can greatly simplify this. Here you have u over u, that's just one. And then next we have v over u, but v over u, that's just theta, the labor market tightness. So this is just m of one and theta. Okay, and so here we've computed the job finding rate. So is the job finding rate f that we have here, is equal to m of 1 and theta. So this is just f of theta. That's our job finding rate.
Okay, so here what we've shown is that the job finding rate actually uh, only depends on the labor market tightness data. Okay, and we've learned something else too. Um, we know that, you remember, we said that the matching function is increasing in its two arguments. So it means that the function m that we have here, when theta goes up, m of 1 on theta is going to go up. So what we learned from that is that the job finding rate f of theta is going to be increasing in uh, is going to be increasing in tightness. So basically, what we see from this is that f prime of theta is going to be positive. Your job finding rate is going to be increasing in uh, tightness. Okay, uh, that's because the matching function is increasing in its two uh, arguments. And so. So what do, what do we see from that? Well, we see that when the tightness is high, so you have a lot of uh, vacant jobs per workers, workers are going to uh, find jobs um, quickly. Okay? Um, and so that makes sense. If you have a lot of vacant jobs available per workers, it gives them just more options through that matching process that's going to fit and they are going to find, uh, they are going to find jobs more quickly. So when you have very high tightness, workers find jobs quickly. When you have very low tightness, workers take a lot of time um, to find jobs. Now we can use the same process to compute the vacancy filling rate. So the vacancy filling rate is just the fraction of vacancies, uh, the number of vacancies that are filled every month. Okay? In terms of notation, the vacancy filling rate we're going to call it Q, and in terms of definition, so it's a number of uh, vacancies, the fraction of vacancies that are filled uh, every month. Okay, so it's going to be the total number of vacancies that are filled, which is M of U and V, that's the total number of new employment matches and we are going to divide it by V to get the fraction of these vacancies that are filled, so to, have a, to obtain a rate. Okay? Um, so that's going to be our vacancy filling rate, and it turns out it's also solely determined by the labor market tightness. So how can mm -hmm. we see that? Well, let's compute it and let's use again the constant return to scale assumption. So Q, it's M of U and V divided by V. Now, as before, we can use constant returns to scale. So we know that if we divide the whole function by v, it's the same as dividing each argument by v. So we have m of u divided by v, v divided by v. Okay, and then what do we have? Well, u divided by v is just 1 over the tightness, because the tightness is v divided by u, and v divided by v, that's just 1. So here, what have we established? We've established that Q, the vacancy filling rate, is a function only of the tightness here. So this is what we call Q of theta. That's our vacancy um, filling rate. And what is, uh, how, how does tightness affect uh, the vacancy filling rate mathematically? Well, here you can see that Q prime of theta, so the derivative of our vacancy filling rate, it's going to be negative. So it means that uh, when tightness is higher, the vacancy filling rate is lower. How do we know that? Well, because when tightness goes up, it shows up here. If tightness is higher, 1 over theta is lower, and the matching function itself is increasing in its two arguments. But if 1 over, the over theta falls, m is going to fall, and so q is going to fall. Um, so q prime of theta, the derivative, is going to be negative. So what that means intuitively is that when tightness is high, the rate at which vacancies are filled is low. What's the reason? Well, when you have a very high tightness, it means that you have a lot of vacant jobs per unemployed. So you have a lot of vacant jobs that are competing with each, with each other for a small number of unemployed workers. And so that makes it very difficult for each individual vacant jobs to be filled. Um, so when you have a high tightness, the rate at which vacancies are filled is going to be low. 
Okay? Um, so it's exactly the opposite as uh, what happens with the job finding rate. The job finding rate was actually increasing in, uh, in tightness. And a last little property that's quite useful to know is the relationship between the two rates. The relationship between f of theta and q of theta. The job finding rate and the vacancy filling rate. What's the relationship between these two things? Well, it turns out there is a very tight relationship. f of theta divided by q of theta is going to be equal to what? Well, if we go back to the definition, f of theta, we know that it's m of u and v divided by u. And then q of theta, we know it's m of u and v divided by d. So 1 over q of theta is going to be v divided by m of u and v, right? What do we have here? Well, we can simplify this. And so what do we get? We get that f of theta divided by q of theta, it's v divided by u, so it's just equal to theta. So that's our key relationship, is that if you want f of theta, it's always equal to theta q of theta. That's a very useful uh, relationship that we are going to use uh, a lot of the time. So it's something that you may want um, to remember. All right.